In Part 9, I introduced a modified dynamical systems model, and in Part 10, the concept of friction. Here, we'll apply friction to the model and see how reality impacts theory. For an example, we'll use a simple two versus one. The first attacker draws the defender. The second attacker moves to support. At just the right moment, the first attacker passes to the second, runs around the defender for the return, and is free. This is the way it works in books, videos, and on courses. It's an idealized theory. Both attackers are perfectly in tune. They have a perfect grasp of the environment. Nothing unexpected happens. They have the physical qualities needed for execution. The defender even helps by being passive and stupid. Under the dynamical systems model with these constraints, the attacker should win every duel, but they don't. Theory plus friction becomes their reality. Clausewitz offers an insight into this disconnect, one that has significant meaning to learning and decision making. He saw war, and for us soccer, as a balance between a remarkable trinity, three pillars that cannot be separated from the nature of the event. When you look back at the 2v1 and the dynamical systems model, it's dry, academic. It's a classroom view of the game, with limited chance events and no passion. In this Clausewitzian model, reason stands for logic and the rules by which we make sense of things. Passion is the primitive feelings and emotions that can drive or distort action. Chance allows for exploration and creativity. It's nature's surprise in the equation. To understand what Clausewitz saw, consider the game without any one of these elements. Without chance, there's little hope for surprise. It's the open door for creative genius and the aha moments for everyone in the game. Without passion, there's no tension, no reason to play or even watch. It's the primordial element that connects people to the game for a lifetime. Soccer without reason is soccer without rules, agreements, even objectives. It's mob action without a future or a form and defies sense making and planning. If you accept that the remarkable trinity and the modified, unified concept of general friction are inherent parts of competitive, team-based, and goal-driven activities, i.e. soccer, you'll have to include the concept of friction in your description and understanding of the game. This leads us to a further modification of the dynamical systems model, one that includes friction. But friction is not a part of the model, it surrounds it. Every element, the environment, the task, and people both create their own friction and are constrained by it. Now that we've seen how friction is both unavoidable and influential, we'll start to focus on how to use it as a tool to get inside the opponent's OODA loop.